The present Paris castle was built in the 13th century by Welsh prince Griffith ap Gwenwynwyn, who wanted to establish his independence from the aggressive princes of Gwynedd in North Wales. This was an act of defiance and in contrast to those built by the English at Conway, Carnarvon and Harlech in order to suppress the Welsh and consolidate Edward I's conquest of Wales. However, within three years, Llewellyn's principality had crumbled, leaving Gothis of Powys able to regain his lordship and rebuild the castle. Gothis, his son and grandson, had all died by 1309, and with no male heir, the castle and lordship passed to heiress Hawisa, who married Sir John Charlton from Shropshire. In 1312, Hawisa's uncle attacked the castle in an attempt to claim the lordship, but failed. Charlton repaired the damage and built two great drum towers that can be seen today, either side of the castle's west entrance. Descendants of the Charltons continued as Lords of Powys for over a hundred years, but in 1421 the lack of male heir resulted in the castle and estate being divided between two daughters, Joyce and Joan who had married Sir John Grey and Sir John Tiptoft, respectively. Under the Tiptofts and their successor, Lord Dudley, the outer ward of the castle was neglected and needed considerable restoration. Luckily, in 1530, Edward Green Lord Powys took possession of the whole castle and began a major rebuilding programme that made Powys the most imposing noble residence in North and Central Wales. In 1578, Powys was leased to Sir Edward Herbert, the second son of William Herbert, the first Earl of Pembroke, and Anne Parr, sister of Catherine Parr, the sixth wife of Henry VIII. As a second son, Edward was not likely to inherit his family home, so he had to make his own way in the world. In 1587, he purchased the castle and estate and it remained in the hands of the Herbert family until 1952, when George, the fourth Earl of Powys, bequeathed the castle and the gardens to the National Trust. George Herbert, great-grandson of Edward Clive, no more famously as Clive of India, had inherited the title of the fourth Earl of Powys, along with the castle and estate, back in 1891, and set about remodelling the castle and garden. In 1902, George began its modernisation by introducing electric lighting and a state-of-the-art hot water central heating system. At the same time, he worked with his architect to re-establish the 17th century decor in many of the state rooms, a style he thought more befitting of a medieval castle. The estate was at its height during the Edwardian period, with notable guests arriving every weekend throughout the winter season including the Prince and Princess of Wales in November 1909. However, this golden era was not to last as George was to suffer a number of family tragedies. The Countess died following a car accident in 1929. Both his sons died whilst on active service. Percy from wounds received at the Battle of the Somme in 1916 and Mervyn in a plane crash in 1943. With no direct heir to the castle, on his deathbed in 1952, George bequeathed powers to the nation in the care of the National Trust. In the garden, four of the 150 metre long original terraces remain, the last two having reverted to banks of earth covered with shrubs. The top terrace is planted with a range of yew trees, a distinctive feature at Powys. Originally tightly clipped in the form of obelisks, they have grown into an array of amorphous shapes. The 14 tumps on the top terrace and the hedge at its eastern end were planted by the second Marquis in the 1720s. The darker Irish yews elsewhere in the garden date from the following century. Below is the Avery Terrace, the site of a birdhouse, which is decorated with four statues of shepherds and shepherdesses by Van Nost. They were once painted in colours but are now treated with a uniform grey weather-resistant paint. 
The third level is the Orangery Terrace, which when built was heated and open to the elements. But in the early 20th century the arcade was enclosed with windows and a door case moved from the main entrance to the keep in the outer courtyard. The last remaining terrace is the Apple Bank. Helena Attlee published notes on the varied planting styles, subtropical on the top terrace, Mediterranean on the Avery Terrace and British double herbaceous borders on the Orangery Terrace. William Ames, apart from the destruction of the water garden, did make improvements to the estate. A road that cut through the park just below the castle was diverted and much planting was undertaken on the Wilderness Ridge, the line of hills opposite the castle on the other side of the Great Lawn. The last major transformation of the gardens was undertaken in the early 20th century by Violet, wife of the fourth Earl. Her ambition was to turn the poor and meagre garden into one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful in England and Wales. Violet's work included the relocation of the entire kitchen garden, including its glass houses, to the new position behind the Wilderness Ridge and the laying out of the formal garden at the base of the terraces and a fountain garden and a croquet lawn in the south far east corner. The kitchen garden has previously been concealed from the castle by the bank of elm trees, but these were brought down in the storm in 1912, exposing a view of the greenhouses which appalled the countess. I am greeted every day by the repulsive sight of the detestable little hot houses which stare in the naked horror up to the beautiful terraces and the grand old castle towering above, she said. The Herbert family continued to live in the part of the castle under an arrangement with the National Trust. The Trust has undertaken a number of major works of restoration during its ownership, including the Marcus Gate, the Grand Staircase and the Sculpture of Fame in the Outer Courtyard. Powys Castle is a Grade 1 listed building, while its gardens have their own Grade 1 listing, and together they form an irresistible attraction that receives over 200,000 visitors a year. <laughs>